The longest psalm in the Bible is Psalm 119. It has been called the psalm of the scriptures because it concentrates on one thing, the amazing sufficiency of God's word for our lives. Open to Psalm 119 today and open your heart to the Lord as we join Scott Pauley in this study. It is our prayer that through God's truth, you will find all you need. Words matter, especially when it comes to the words of the living God. You know, words convey thought. They convey truth. They convey things that we need to understand. Aren't you glad God wrote a book? Aren't you glad God put in black and white on paper for us and preserved it for every generation, his thoughts, his truth, his words? And I want to say to you today that every word of the word matters. We believe that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. So every word of God and the very words of God are given for our benefit. If that's true, then we need to be careful not to just skim over words, to think we know what they mean. Uh, We've come in our study to the longest psalm in the Bible. It's Psalm 119. There's 176 verses, of course. And in 176 verses, there are a lot of words. And there are a lot of words that God repeats, uh, that God uses to emphasize certain things. I want to pause right where we are in our study and give a little parenthesis, if I may, because we've examined the first section, the first eight verses of Psalm 119, and we're about to launch into the second section. And I think it's a good place to point out to you that God uses nine distinct words in Psalm 119 to reference His Word. In fact, in almost every verse, all but about four verses, and we'll look at those later, uh, the very Word of God is referenced using one of these nine words. These are words for the Word. I want to help you identify them. I hope you'll make a list of them somewhere. And it's going to be fairly easy because the first seven are found in the first section. And then the eighth is found in verse 9. And then the final one, the ninth one, is not introduced until verse 91. So make the list somewhere. And not only do I want to help you identify them, I want to help you apply them. Because as I've meditated on these nine words, it has really come home to my heart that every one of these connects to my life in some way. Remember, the emphasis of Psalm 119 is on obedience, on doing, on keeping God's Word. So let's start. Verse number 1, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. So there's the first word, the word law. It's a word that perhaps you've heard before. It's the word Torah. Uh, The Jewish people referred to the first five books of the Bible the law of Moses, using this word. Uh, But when you come to Psalm 119, it is not just referencing the books of Genesis through Deuteronomy. It's a reference to all of God's law. You see, the God of the Bible is a God of order, which means he is a God of laws. He's a God that gives clarity and gives certainty. And by the way, this is very important, his laws do not change. Our world today has so many laws. We just keep adding them all the time. You know why men have to keep adding laws? Because men do not obey God's law. If we obeyed God's law, we would not need all of man's laws because really what all the laws are doing, they're trying to keep sinners from hurting themselves and hurting others. And yet if we obeyed God's law, it would fix all of that. And the other thing that I find interesting is that in our world, people are changing the laws. They're they're shifting them. And why are they changing the laws? They're changing the laws because the cultural norms change. The mores of society are constantly shifting, constantly moving, so abstract, so relative. And yet, my friend, I want to tell you that God's law never changes. It is forever settled. His law never changes because his nature, his character never changes. Don't you think we need to return to God's law? This is a really good starting point, isn't it? In verse number one, the word law. It's used about 25 times in Psalm 119. And interestingly enough, if you study the word law, it comes from a word that means to teach or to direct. In other words, God's laws were not just to be learned, they were to be lived. God's laws were not just to be known, posted on a wall somewhere, uh, given, given some nod to. No, God's laws are supposed to be applied to our lives. 
And so here's our application of the word law. Lord, let your law be my teacher and give me direction. Would you pray that today? Uh, Would you take your cue not from culture, but from God? Would you take your cue not from what men say is acceptable, which is constantly changing, but rather from the law of God, which never changes? So we have the first word. It's the word law. And then we come to verse number two, and we read this, Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with a whole heart. So the first word is the word law. The second word is the word testimonies. Here it's used in the plural. Occasionally it's in the singular, testimony. It is found about 23 times in Psalm 119. If I said to you, give a testimony, I mean by that, share your story. Uh, Tell me what's on your heart. Tell me what's on your mind. Oh, this is beautiful. A testimony is deeply personal. It's an expression of the soul. It's an expression of experience. It grows out of who you are and what you know. It is is very similar to the word in the Bible, witness. So someone gives their testimony. They give their witness to something. Now think of that as it is connected here to God's word. God says that his word is his witness. It is his own personal testimony. Would you like to hear God speak today? Would you like to know him personally? Would you like to know him more intimately? Would you like to know what God is thinking and how God feels about something? Then, my friend, you need to get in the Word of God and let the Word of God get into you. By the way, a testimony is always binding. Our God is a God of covenant. He's a God of promise, and you can take his witness, his testimony, to the bank. You can be sure that God's word truly reveals God's heart and it conveys everything God wants us to know about him. John chapter 5 and verse number 39, Jesus told the religious people that they needed to search the scriptures, that they needed to get in the word because the scriptures, he said, would testify of him. And so here's our application of this. Lord, let your testimonies become my testimony. Lord, I want your personal word to become uh, the word that guides my personal life. Oh, Lord, let your law be my teacher and give me direction and let your testimony become deeply personal to me. And then let's look at one more today. Look at verse number three. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. This is an interesting expression, his ways. In fact, the psalm actually began that way. Blessed are the undefiled in the way. And now, what way are we referring? God's way. You know, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. We're not talking about man's way or sin's way or the world's way. It is the Lord's way. This expression is only found a couple of times in Psalm 119 for the word of God. But I think it's very important because it gives us quite a picture of what God always intended his word to do, and that is to direct our path. The word that's used here for ways literally means a road, a course, As someone who travels all the time, I can tell you that direction matters. Direction determines destination. You better be sure you're on the right road and moving in the right direction. And God says, if you want that to be true, get on the path laid out for you in the word. In fact, in Psalm 119, verse 15, the word that's used for his ways is the word for a well-trodden road. I wonder, is God's word a well-trodden path in your life? I love a new Bible, the look of it, even the smell of it. But there's one thing more precious than a a new Bible, and that's a Bible that is well-worn with use, not with abuse, but with use, read and marked. Oh, we're finding in it God's way. Lord, let your law be my teacher. Let your testimony become my personal story, and let your way become my way. May God's word affect your life today. All you need is found in the Word of God. As you learn it and apply it, you will come to know the God of the Word more and more. Our prayer today is that you will grow in your understanding of Scripture and your love for the one who gave it. You may find additional resources for Bible study at our online home. Visit enjoyingthejourney.org today. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for your prayers, support, And thanks for sharing the Enjoying the Journey studies with others.